Hello friends and subscribers, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. Uh, thanks to the folks who left comments today, it's really cool to know that there are other folks out there um, interested in optical media. And um, I'm doing my archiving for 2023, as I mentioned in the last video. So while I'm kind of uh, thinking about archival, um, I'm doing a few of these videos just covering things I haven't talked about before. Um, one of the topics I haven't covered yet is for in the world of M-Discs is duplicators. And uh, today we're going to be looking at some of the options on the market in January of 2024. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's take a look. I'll show you guys some of the things that I found. Um, and why you might want one of these if you're really going, you know, serious on the uh, optical media archiving slash backup, uh, this might be useful. So I'm guessing I'd be interested if people know more in the comments uh, what these what these things were originally used for, because there are these insane duplicators on some of these duplication sites. Like I think I was looking at a one to 200 duplicator, like it like, looks like a mainframe, like a huge, huge thing. Um, and I'm guessing back in the day when, you know, CD and DVD were how people distributed files, perhaps a company might produce a video and distribute it like that to their um, employees. Another use case I assume was envisioned with these would be actually a commercial distribution. Although I don't know if the, when people actually are making DVDs, I, I wouldn't think they're using these duplicators but if, if you know the answer i'd be very intrigued because some of these discs some of these machines are wild and they get up to like 40 50 000 bucks for the like one to two or three hundred duplicators uh, but we're looking at much much uh, smaller duplicators for today's video because we're just looking at it for a uh, personal backup and archiving or that's what i have in mind when i'm making this so why would you want one so we've talked about many times how when you're doing archival or backup you always want two copies of your data one off-site one on-site and the way I do it, so I don't own a duplicator. I would love to own a duplicator, but um, it's just not something I really need. So I haven't invested in it yet. I would say if, you, if you're looking to move to buy one of these, uh, you probably should do so sooner rather than later because I can definitely see deprecation hitting these before it does the drive because in today's world, it just seems like very few people would actually have a, you know, have a need for a duplicator. And uh, these companies and products all, all look a little bit old fashioned to me, um, just as a general observation. So that would be one use. And the other use would be uh, 321 is kind of just your basic backup rule. If you have really important data, some people like to actually do 432, uh, which would be four copies of your data, your original data plus three copies. Uh, four, three, two, three different uh, data stores and two off-site locations. So you'd have your on-site and two off-sites. If you're storing really important data and some of the stuff I was just archiving today, I actually am um, managing some uh, historical data. Uh, it's a long story as to what historical data. I'm talking from the 19 digitizations of birth records and marriage records from the 19th century. And um, I think that people would be pretty pissed off if I lost their data. So this is something that I I would naturally just say, OK, let's do two off sites because this is really important stuff. And I don't want to be responsible for uh, for being the guy who loses, you know, if someone's looking for the, mar the marriage record of their great, great grand. It was from a historical society that my late grandfather used to run for those who are curious as to why I have marriage records from the 19th century uh, sitting around on my NAS. Um, so yeah, that's another use for the duplicators would be uh, if you want to have quite a few copies of your data, which I think is a good practice. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think there's, there's any point in creating 10 backups. Like there is a point where it's just kind of pointless, I would say. Uh, but I don't think, you know, 432 is completely obscene uh, for very important data, like the type that I just mentioned. Um, and then we have this question of whether regular Blu-ray stuff works with M-Disc. And as I mentioned in the previous video, the consensus seems to be that for products manufactured after 2021, that all Blu-ray stuff should work with M-Disc Blu-rays. But the issue here is that some of the duplicators look quite old. So definitely worth checking. And because some of these things cost $1,000, if you're going to spend that kind of money, I would, of course, recommend making sure, writing to the manufacturer just to make sure that they can 
duplicate the type of uh, stuff you want duplicated. So here's the kind of um, very basic option I came across on Amazon. This is just a one-to-one. It's by a company called Plex Copier and uh, they will do BDXL and you have the MDisk logo up there. So um, as it says, there's no PC required. For those who've used a um, hard drive cloner or a SD card cloner, it's the same principle. These things are supposed to be really kind of dummy proof like you usually hit a button saying clone and it just copies. Um, so what I, what would be hand the, for 250 bucks um, if I really thought there was a need I would definitely buy one of these personally uh, what it would be would be so you'd you'd create your backup your on-site backup and then instead of having to do the next one on your computer you could just fire up your duplicator um, that and then you could, it would also be useful if you're doing your off-site backups in a batch like maybe it's once a year you are copying your on-sites um, for bringing them to the off-site library and instead of doing it uh, all tediously at your computer where you have to read think about the process in a computer you'd have to read the disk copy that onto your computer then write the second disk then delete it from your computer so a duplicator makes life simpler uh, for this kind of uh, batch copying work um, so just to show you guys some of the kind of wild stuff out there I mean this one is slightly less crazy there's like four um, duplication websites out there so I'm really really intrigued and if people do know what the uh, what the deal is why these things were why there's such a market for these kind of random pieces of hardware let me know uh, this is one called duplicators for all and it's a one to three duplicator um but you have to be careful to make sure uh oh sorry it is it is blu-ray so it's blu-ray cd dvd with mdisc support and it's one to three so you can uh, pop in your original mdisc and you'll get out three copies three copies can be created simultaneously and this thing will set you back um, the best part of a thousand um, British pounds, pounds sterling. So, um, and finally, just I, want, I wanted to just just get one of these like crazy ones just to show you guys. Um, was that Pro Duplicator the previous one? No, a different different duplication website. Duplicator is for all, and this one is being sold by Pro Duplicator. Uh, this is the I think the biggest MDisc um, BDXL duplicator I could find. At uh, one to fifteen, so you can simultaneously duplicate your M disk fifteen times, and uh, this um, magnificent piece of random hardware will set you back uh, two thousand six hundred dollars. Uh, it's called the ESBR fifteen from Pro Duplicator. Um, so I don't think there needs to be much more said about the M disk duplication market. There's a few of them on the market. If you just want a simple one to one duplicator, they're about three hundred dollars. And uh, but and if you have if you can think of a reason why you might need a one to fifth one to fifteen BDXL duplicator, let me know because I'm kind of intrigued. Thanks for watching today's video. Hope it was uh, interesting. Until the next one, thank you for watching.